In this video, I will explain how we've made use of flipped classroom teaching in a master's level course. I will also discuss conclusions and outcomes, at least from a student and teacher's perspective. In very few words, the idea with flipped classroom teaching is that the students can meet the material through interactive videos that they watch at home, such that the time in class, normally spent on lectures, can instead be dedicated to different types of active learning strategies. Some of the questions that we asked ourselves when we decided to use flipped classroom teaching in this master's course was, how do students perceive the new teaching style? Is it feasible to teach a master's course with 35 students using flipped classroom teaching? And can we reach the learning objectives in a course without in-class lectures? I will try to at least answer the first two of these questions in this video. The course we decided to flip was a master's course given for the first time in study period one during the fall 2014. We had 35 students who were mainly master's students, but there were also some PhD students and some participants from the industry. Among the 10 lectures in the course, five were flipped and there were no lectures given on the corresponding material. Instead, we provided online video lectures on an online platform called scalablelearning.com, which was developed by Professor David Black Sheffer at Uppsala University. I would also like to take this moment to thank Professor Black Sheffer for many helpful suggestions regarding how to flip a classroom. So, instead of lectures, we then had what I refer to as practice sessions that focused on conceptual understanding of the material. It is important to note that we also had tutorial sessions where students could discuss home assignments. Roughly speaking, I think of practice sessions as a tool to improve understanding, whereas the tutorials focus on the skills required to solve problems. I don't know about you, but I view both the practice sessions and the online videos as new and appealing elements in our courses. Regarding the videos, I prepared between four and seven videos for each lecture, and these videos typically lasted for roughly 60 minutes in total. The length of the individual videos were typically between five and 20 minutes long. The videos were screencasts of slides uh, with a voiceover, pretty much like the one you're watching now. And they often contain some type of handwritten derivations. They also contain the instructor's head, the my face, for at least some initial part of the video. In difference to the video that you're watching now, the videos in the course all contain at least one multiple choice question that the students should answer before class. Let me say a few words about the practice sessions. To me, as a teacher, it was a wonderful experiment. For every lecture, I now had a full two hour session that I could dedicate to providing an understanding of key concepts through different group activities. This is a rare and great luxury, though at the same time rather challenging. The plan for the sessions was to dedicate the first 10 minutes or so to go through questions that had appeared when the students were watching the videos. The rest of the time was spent on two types of activities, namely collaborative problem solving and peer instructions, performed in groups of four students. All the problems and questions that we covered during these sessions were developed by us specifically with the objective to improve the students' understanding of the material. Designing these problems is not an easy task, and I'm sure that we will be able to improve on it with time. Many of you may ask yourself how one can convince the students to watch the videos at home. Uh, one thing that we did was to try to illuminate and illustrate why we think flipped classroom teaching is a good idea. In addition to this, and probably more importantly, we actually simply forced the students to watch the videos at home and attend the practice session by making them mandatory. This is not exactly a pretty solution, but we had several reasons for doing this. In terms of course administration, I would also like to mention that the course does not have a written exam and perhaps this made students accept additional mandatory tasks during the study period. In order to evaluate what the students thought about the flipped classroom, I included a few additional questions to the course evaluation. As I mentioned before, we replaced lectures with two new teaching elements and the first two questions were related to these. Uh, the first question was, I would rather watch a video lecture with quizzes than a live lectures. And the majority of the students clearly agreed about this. In the second question, we asked the students if they thought the practice sessions were useful. And again, the majority of the students agreed about this. 
An interesting observation is that previous studies of flipped classroom teaching have mentioned that even though most students really like the flipped classroom technique, there are often at least one student in each class who strongly dislikes it. And we get a very similar result here. One aspect that is frequently discussed when people consider how to design video lectures is how long the individual videos should be. In case you're familiar with Khan Academy, you might have noticed that they have the policy that videos should not be longer than 10 minutes. And there are other people who argue that they should not be longer than six minutes. Considering that many of my videos are 15 minutes long, it felt relevant to check if the length of the videos bothered the students. According to their answers here, the length does not seem to be a problem. Though some students pointed out that the total length of all the videos that they should watch before a single class should not be significantly longer than 60 minutes. To evaluate the complete concept of flipped classroom teaching, I also asked the students if they thought that it had led to improved learning and better understanding of the concepts, and the majority of the students strongly agreed with this statement. So at least according to this highly subjective measure, uh, I think it was uh, a great success. In order to get more specific feedback, the students were also asked to list pros and cons with flipped classroom teaching. In the following list, I've tried to cluster similar answers into groups. Many of the advantages that the students mentioned were related to the videos, and they said some stuff like, it's possible to watch the videos at my own pace, and it's also possible to watch videos again. Other students uh, mentioned uh, aspects related to the activeness, saying that they learn faster because you're more active and that you get more interaction with the teacher. The disadvantages that they mentioned were the increased workload and what I think are two comments related to the practice session. The first uh, comment was practice sessions are not useful because students solve problems at different paces. And another student said talking about the lectures was not useful. It is possible that this comment refers to the time that we spent going through questions that students asked while watching the videos, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. And finally, there were some students pointing out that they hadn't noticed any disadvantages. The students were also asked to describe their overall impression of the course, uh, and the majority of the students thought that the course was excellent. As the main teacher of the course, I'm of course very pleased and flattered by such positive statements, uh, but unfortunately, the course has never been taught before, which means that we can't tell if the evaluation would have been different if we had not flipped half the lectures. If you read the statements below, you can see that most students found the course very demanding and time-consuming. However, I think the majority of the workload was related to the fact that they had weekly home assignments that they had to hand in. And my impression was that they didn't find the time that they had to dedicate watching videos at home as uh, very demanding. Let me finish this presentation with some of my own reflections and impressions. To me, what I found most exciting about the flipped classroom was the practice sessions. Students generally showed up very well prepared and ready to discuss. Since I also gave lectures, I had the possibility to compare, at least subjectively, how much better prepared the students were after watching the videos, and the difference was enormous. During the first weeks of the course, some students were very confused about fundamental aspects of the topic. What I refer to here are misunderstanding of paramount importance, given which very little of the rest of the course makes any sense at all. And my feeling and impression was that these sessions managed to correct many such misunderstandings, thanks to vivid discussions among the students, but also with me. One drawback with the flipped classroom is that it takes a lot of time to develop the material. It's also quite difficult. I would guess that it takes at least two extra day per lecture, probably more and sometimes much more. This was also the reason why I did not flip more than five lectures the first year. Ideally, I would like to flip three more lectures next year, but it's a matter of time and priorities. Uh, one problem that I had was that I sometimes needed many attempts to record a video uh, but writing down a manuscript really helps. I can admit that I'm reading from a manuscript at this moment. During the practice session, we had one teacher for 35 students. And to allow for more students per teacher, we need to adjust the activities. That is, if we have more students uh, next year and we would like to keep the activities the way they are, I would need support 
in order to run these activities during the practice sessions. Finally, <clears throat> some general conclusions is, are that um, I think it's been amazing to use flipped classroom teaching, uh, but a course doesn't automatically become fantastic just because you flip it. You really need to think through all the parts and dedicate a lot of time and energy to it. A common suggestion that I think is reasonable is to initially only flip two lectures and then gradually transform your courses using flipped classroom teaching. That's all for today. Thanks for listening.